Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Evening Prayer. Well, we had a lot of communication with y'all today. A uh, lot of emails, a lot of things going on. A lot of people are on the fence. A lot of people are convicted. A lot of people are um, really hearing a lot of weird stuff they've never heard before. I offer you this. When you watch a channel, what's their main focus? Is it learning from Scripture? Learning what God's will is for us and, and for our lives? What Christ's desire is for us? Or are they spending all their time bashing other people? That was one of the things that I noticed last year. I couldn't reconcile it. Not my channel. You know, Their channels aren't my channels. I can't tell them how to do anything. With the recent events that are going on, I'm sure you all heard what J.D. Farrakh said last night. Stop fighting with the saved and, and save the lost. And what Brother Chad Thomas put up, he's still being attacked. There's a group of people that supposedly love him. Same thing happened to me. Same thing happened to Amanda Christian. Same thing happened to a lot of people. Poor Jesse, they're starting to harass him now too. There's a lot of people that are getting harassed because they don't follow the agenda and they don't follow the, the group or the mob mentality that they've done. The, the monopoly has been set. I, I never was one to follow or play ball. I, I'm not about the status quo. And I'm not going to be doing it. And there's still lies being told about me. I don't care. See, none of that matters. See, several of you have started going through my older videos. And you've been coming back and telling me, hey, I'm going through your videos. I can't find where, what they're saying. Exactly. That's why I didn't have to stand up and defend myself. My videos speak for themselves. Brother Chad's videos speak for him. Go back and look at them. Boom, there you go. So people can say what they want with no evidence. Tim and Lisa and Greg and and all the uh, who Jennifer and uh, Frazier and and uh, Wackadoo Small all them guys are all mad because I I saw what was happening and I called it out. These are all people that told me they love me. These were all people that told me that I was doing a great job, um, but then would hem haw around about the right words uh, in emails and in, in the WhatsApp chat we were talking about, going behind everyone's back. Uh, having other conversations, trying to change what my ministry was putting out. Um, just two days prior to me sounding off, they supported me. Two days after, they supported me. I have a text message from Lisa Boyce saying that Tim Henderson supported me and agreed with me. And from Lisa saying her and her husband support me 100%. Two days later, live stream goes up. I have a spirit of stupid. There's something wrong with me. Okay. Fair enough. You do what you want. I'm not worried about them because they have no power. They have no authority. Christ is the authority. The word is the authority. They can say and do what they want. It means nothing. The only power their words have are the power you give them. So anybody who's hearing what they're saying is like, well, go and watch my videos. All you have to do is go back and look through the videos, and you can see very clearly for yourself. I've still got people that are commenting, well, you know, like somebody yesterday was like, well, we, you said this, so now I'm confused. Did I say it as my opinion, or was I reading you scripture? And I told the person, you heard the scripture that said it, right? They never commented back. No kidding. It's an attempt by Satan because he has one people to his side and he's influencing them. And it's an attempt by Satan to bring down fellowship and to control the information that's being put out. If you're watching a channel that puts up the exact same content every single time, there's a problem. Now, there's been some nasty stuff said in, in private conversations that I've been privy to from several of these individuals, mo 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 almost all of them, talking about me. I don't care. Your words mean nothing to me. I know that the gospel of grace has to be preached. People need to be saved. There are people out there that need to be saved. Like J.D. said, don't fight with the saved. Go and save the people that need it. So this ministry is going to continue to push forward and is going to continue to preach what the Bible says. Simple. And I'm not going to be swayed or turned either direction. Because see, on the other side of the path, in the other ditch... All the people that say you have to have works for salvation, uh, they're trying to win me to their side. I don't think so. 
a bunch of them just unsub from me today. I don't think so. I'm not interested. I'm interested in what the Bible says, not what some some person who thinks they know what the Bible means says. Chad is just one in a line. He has a very influential channel. I really hope he stays the course and keeps fighting and blocks these people and stops communicating with them. The only way you can keep this stuff under control and to keep yourself from being overwhelmed is to block them and not communicate with them. The Bible says break fellowship with people like this. I'm breaking fellowship with them. Now, a lot of you guys like Tim. I like Tim. A lot of you guys like Lisa and Greg and all. I like them too. I have nothing but love for them. But you go and hear what they're saying about me and then hear what I'm saying about them. Where's the problem at? Because I never said anything negative about them until the day I named them when I blew the lid off all this stuff that was going on. And it was because every one of them stabbed me in the back. I included David Benjamin in that too. Dave, me and David were having some very good conversations. I think David may be conflicted at the, at the moment. I think he may be struggling with where the right place is to stand on this. And I hope so, because I hope he realizes what's going on and what he's been saying and comes out of that and gets away from that group. It, what's going on is very dangerous. But I can't convince you guys. You have to make your own decision on this. So with everything you've seen, do your due diligence. Look at the evidence for yourself about who's doing the right thing and who isn't. Because the people, listen, Jesus is seeing every single thing. He is hearing every single word. Those people are not justified in what they're saying. Do not let them tell you what all this means. You go find out for yourself. And many on my channel have. And they see quite clearly what's happening. So please, guys, don't let somebody tell you what something is. You go find it. Because in 9 out of 10 cases, maybe even more than that, 10 out of 10, you'll find that that person isn't giving you the whole truth. That's why I share so much scripture in every video, even morning and evening prayer. In this prayer, we're going to do 1 Thessalonians 4. Plea for purity. And it goes right along the line with what's being, what we're talking about. And ironically, the verse that I was led to share for simplicity of salvation talks about the same thing. So it all lines up perfectly. Christ is sending out a message to the body. He's like, hey, wake up. Pay attention. I'm on my way. Our Father has had mercy and had patience and gave everyone plenty of time to figure this out. But look, the door's shutting. And once the door shuts, it will not be opened again. So you've got to figure this out now. And it's not that hard. Read the Bible. The Bible will tell you. More people have come up to me in comments and said, Yeah, I took your advice. I read five verses below, above and five verses below. And it makes sense. So it's right there. It's that easy. What's happening right now is showing everyone's true colors for who they really are. Go watch their video. If they're bashing me or anyone else just simply because we're sharing scripture, you know who has the problem. So anybody who's wrestling with these things, anybody who's being attacked, stand strong. You know what the truth is. It's in the Bible. Stand strong in the truth. Stay focused. This prayer is going to be for, for all of you because we need to be diligent in this time. I, I can't quit doing this, even though, even though I really want to. I've been given a commission. A couple of weeks ago, after all that stuff blew up, I was like, this is it. I'm, I'm, I'm doing it. Actually, it was right before that. I'm shutting my, it was that weekend. I'm shutting my ministry down. I'm done. I'm not going to deal with this anymore. It's just too much infighting. And me and the Lord had a conversation. I was in prayer and he was like, just deliver the message. I was like, Lord, it's not doing any good. Why bother? It's a waste of time. All I want you to do is deliver the message. Just tell them. That's it. I'll take care of everything else. He was like, I, I, I need at least one to send the message. That's it. I said, okay, send me then, Lord. And he did. And that's why I was re I had everything set up to shut my ministry down. And then in, in literally just a matter of a few hours, everything flipped the other direction. So... Christ is calling out to everybody, and he's using us to deliver this message of, hey, you need to get right. Hey, you need to pay attention to what my word is telling you. Hey, you need to listen to what I said. I've, been, I've called up people to deliver this message. 
Listen, listen to it. It's not the people. It's the message contained within what they're sharing. So let's go into 1 Thessalonians 4, the plea for purity. Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more, just as you received from us how you ought to walk and to please God. How you ought to walk. All these people bash and chad. How you ought to walk. It's right there in the scripture on the screen you're looking at. And to please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God. Listen. Remember how he says, you know, you can figure out what the will of God is and do that in another scripture? Listen. Verse 3. For this is the will of God. Your sanctification. That you should abstain from sexual immorality. I fear that there's many people who are caught up in this stuff. And that's why a lot of the reactions we have going on are going on. They're being convicted. And instead of reacting to the conviction and changing, you're not called to be successful. You're called to make an effort. It's not about doing it right. It's not about being perfect. A lot of people are trying so desperately to be perfect and getting rid of certain things out of their lives. It's not about you being perfect. It's about you trying. The desire of your heart now has changed to go that direction. You're not, you, chances are you're not going to make it. That's where Christ comes in. He's our advocate. He deals with what's left over. He cleanses us and he sanctifies us. But he's looking for people that are willing to go there. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality. That each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor. Does, does that not sound like works to you? Uh-oh. Watch out for the videos all these people are going to make now. And the thing is, it's the scripture telling you this. That each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor. This now puts the responsibility on the individual Christian to look at what the Word of God says and go, hmm, that looks like it applies to me. Let me analyze this and myself and make changes. In prayer. Verse 5. Not in passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter, which is happening on YouTube right now, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also forewarned you and testified. There are Christians, or supposed Christians, that are on this platform right now. The things that they're doing are going to hurt them, and they don't realize it. They don't want to have to change. They wanted to make it about them and not about Christ. Verse 7, for God did not call us to uncleanness, but in holiness, flee from your sin. I'm saved by grace through faith. So am I. But I also know that Christ and the Holy Father is calling me to eliminate things in my life that don't belong there. It's part of you loving him. Loving him enough to go, Father, I don't want to do these things. I don't want to be a part of this world. Show me how to separate myself. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but in holiness. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God, who has also given us his Holy Spirit. Let me read that again, because there's a bunch of people right now. Some are hearing this and some aren't. Because I know some of the people that left uh, today um, were people that were uh, trying to comment and put hateful comments out, but they've been blocked a long time now. This applies to everybody, especially these people that are attacking Chad and me and, and everybody else. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God, who has also given us his Holy Spirit. Boom. Mic drop. I mean, you don't even need to go any further. That's all the conviction you need. Uh, but wait, there's more. Verse 9, But concerning brotherly love, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. It's not love to make fun of people and make videos bashing people because you disagree with what they shared when the word of God supports it. Verse 10, And indeed, you do so toward all the brethren who are in Macedonia. But we urge you, brethren, that you increase more and more. That means you do better. That you also aspire to lead a quiet life. 
Aspire, another word for aspire is strive. To lead a quiet life, to mind your own business. Mind your own business. That's why I've been staying on my channel. I'm not going to other people's channels. Just a select few. And to work with your own hands as we commanded you. That you may walk properly toward those who are outside and that you may lack nothing. Somebody told me earlier that um, somebody on Tim's channel was saying that they had to block me because I was harassing Tim so much. I've commented three times in the last six months on Tim's videos because I quit watching his videos. He never came up with anything new. I quit, I quit watching them. There was nothing there. No, no structure, no meat, no content, no nothing. It was the same thing over and over again. I quit watching Greg Jackson's videos. One or two here and there in the last six months, and that's it. There was no content. There's no body there. There's no meat. There's no nothing. There's no nourishment. Many other channels I quit watching, same reason. Same thing all the time. Never changes. So how they can say I was harassing Tim when I only commented three times on three different videos in six months, that's a lie. Plain and simple. Verse 13, we're going to keep going, but I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen. Oh, that doesn't apply to what we're talking about. That's talking about the rapture. Okay. So these first 12 verses in 1 Thessalonians 4 are very telling for each of us. But they're also telling on the ones doing the things they're doing. They know it's wrong. They know they're not supposed to do it. If they are in the Lord and understand the word the way they proclaim they do, they are. They know what they're doing is wrong. They know that when they harass somebody who reads the word of God that tells us plainly and clearly what is expected of us as Christians, they know they are going against the word of God and against the very words of the Christ they say they believe in. I'm saved by grace through faith in Christ alone. Then why aren't you listening to him? Why aren't you believing what he told you? Why aren't you honoring his words by walking in the walk he saved you to walk in? It's not like it's something hard to do. It's not like you've got to wear a dress up to your neck and all the way down to your ankles and be like a Puritan and never look up and all. It's, it's not what you're called for. You're called to look at your life. Okay, I'm saved and I'm justified. Let me look at what's going on. And the Holy Spirit shows you you need to get rid of this, get rid of this, get rid of this. Make some changes here. Your life will be better. It's not about being perfect. It's not about leading it and, and, and succeeding it perfectly. It's not even about you doing your ministry perfectly if you have one. It's that you tried. It's that you stepped up and answered the call. It's that your desire in your heart changed. I want to do things to please you, Lord. I know I can't be perfect at it. I know I'm going to fall a lot. But what he's looking at is he's looking for the ones who are doing that because they're the ones that are crawling their way across the ground to the narrow path to get to him. The rest of them are all standing in the back back. They're trying to stop everybody. Picture that. Jesus is standing there on the narrow path at the gate. He's like, all right, come on. And there's a group of people that are lined up and they're trying to stop people from going to him by using the gospel as a weapon. It's wrong. They know it's wrong. The Lord rebuked them for what they're doing and shut their mouths. The Lord stopped them by for doing this, sharing this level of hatred this level of no love for people trying to change the word to match what they want it to mean instead of allowing ministries to do what the Lord led them to do. There are ministries that are going to share things you may not necessarily agree with, but that's not your call. That's between them and the Lord. And in the word of God, we are told not to get in the way of that. If there's something that's actually heresy, you address the heresy, but you don't do it from a place of hatred which I see people doing, that are supposed to be grace. You should see some of the comments. I still have screenshots on my phone. Some of the hateful stuff that's going out there by people who call themselves grace from a certain couple of channels. 
That's not right, and you know it's not right. You got a problem with it? Take it up with Christ. He's the one that wrote it. This, this isn't from Mr. Christian. I'm reading the Word of God. 1 Thessalonians 4, 1-12, through 12, very clearly spell out no hidden agenda, no secrets to, to, for us to unload. We don't have to go to the Greek. It's very clear what it's talking about. All the other scriptures I've shared in the videos in the last couple of weeks very clearly tell you what's going on. If you can't go to the Word and see this, if you think this is me giving my opinion when I'm literally reading you the scriptures that say it, you've got a problem, not me. Go to the Lord in prayer and fix yourself. All these people that are hating on Chad and all these other people, look, you're not bothering me a bit. I've been through a thousand times worse than this. I look back on my life now and I go join the army. There's nothing anybody can say to offend you because they give you everything there. It's bad. But these other people who wear their heart on their sleeve, these people who are genuine and they're humble and they're kind and they haven't been exposed to stuff like this are now suddenly getting blasted with hatred bazookas and they're just getting wiped out and they don't know how to process it. I feel bad for them. A lot of channels have shut down because of this. A lot of people don't know how to address this or what to say. All I can tell you is stand for the truth. And if somebody comes against that, block them. My block list is longer than anybody's on YouTube. Block them and move on. They can still watch your videos. They just can't comment. If they send you an email, you go on the if you go up on the upper corner, there's there's a little dot. Click on those three little dots. Mute. You'll never get an email from them again. I will not let somebody dictate to me who thinks they know the Bible but denies three quarters of the scriptures in it. Tell me how I need to do my ministry. I can read the Word of God for myself. I can understand. I'm not an idiot. Or a, what was the term, a gaslighter? Let them make videos. Let them rail. Let them talk smack. Their words mean nothing. They only have the power you give them. Where people came up with that stuff, I don't know. It's a social justice thing. Words have power. Only if you give them power. Because you can figure, well, I'm going to say all these things to him and that's going to, I just took all the power out of them and your words just bounce off. They mean nothing to me. And then you get blocked. <laughs> See, this isn't a game like these people think it is. This isn't like they're fighting the good fight for the Lord by hating other people. The Bible tells you not to do that. If you've committed hate against your brother, you have murdered him. And you will be judged thus. So that means your behavior and your activities and your speech are condemning you. The, but I'm saved. Go read the scriptures. I've been sharing the scriptures that talk about this. A born-again believer, just in Jesus' own words, can enter heaven like one escaping the flames. They will have nothing there. Many, he says many will suffer great loss on that day. That's the Bema seat. If this is Jesus himself telling people that, what does that tell you? Just like it says here, what kind of person should you be? Verse 1 in 1 Thessalonians 4. How you ought to walk and to please God. What I see going on on YouTube is not pleasing to him. That's why he's blowing this stuff open. People's true colors, people's actual fruit are showing. And yes, you are allowed to judge their fruit. How are you going to know he says you'll know them by their fruit. Well, how are you going to know them by their fruit if you're not looking at it? Look at what they're doing. They're trying to hide this. They are being led by Satan. Some of them don't know it. Most of them don't care. It's a power play. You won't get Mr. Christian. You can try, but you're not going to. Now, there's a bunch of them that are working trying to get my channel shut down. It hasn't worked so far. I can open another account. I have other devices. There are other platforms. You cannot stop the gospel. You will not stop the gospel. In Jesus' name, I pray he rebukes all of this and all the people involved in it. I pray that he rebukes 
all of this heresy and this nonsense that is going on, this hatred towards loving, caring brethren who are saved, who are trying to get the truth out there, who are answering the call for a ministry that was put on them by the Lord. The Lord, I pray the Lord shut them up until we leave. If that's what they want, they can stay here and have all the narcissism they want. That doesn't belong in heaven. And it's not going to go there. You do with that information what you will. Let's get into some prayer. Let's lift up our Lord. Let's get strengthened and edified. Lord Jesus, we come before you this evening to give you praise, honor, glory, and to thank you. We praise you for opening the, our eyes, opening the eyes of the brethren, turning the light on for those who were caught in this same deception and trap and have stood up and realized this is wrong and they're standing on your word. We honor you for the sacrifice that you made to save us and then to provide for us a life that would show the works of God in our lives. We glorify you for being our Lord, our Messiah, for calling us out of the world, for giving us a ministry. Thank you for this ministry you've given me. For giving us a, a way to communicate the gospel to the world. And we thank you for leading us into your truth, for answering the prayers, the prayers I've been putting on here over and over, lead us into your truth. Not man's truth, your truth, and you're doing that. I see it happening. It's amazing. Lord, there's a division in the body. A heavy price is being paid for not understanding the gospel, not reading your word, and not understanding what it says, and not proclaiming the truth. A heavy toll is being taken. But I know that you're doing this on purpose. You're shedding light on the great deception. You're shedding light on the tares. The gathering is happening. We're being gathered up because the way they do the wheat harvest is they gather the wheat, then they gather the tares. Then the wheat goes into the barn, up into the barn. And the tares are bundled and cast into the flames. We know the flames is a reference of the tribulation. Up in the barn is a reference to the Father's house in heaven. Lord, we look at the world right now. We see what's happening. We know the rapture of the church is upon us. We know that we are literally moments away. We know that there's no time left. But in your infinite mercy, you have given us space our Father in Heaven has shown patience and mercy to us to give us time to figure this out, to give us time to change our hearts and to have a desire to want to please you and to please our Father in Heaven. 1 Thessalonians 4, 1-12 through 12 clearly talks about that. You are going out of your way to wake up your church in, in honor of Brother Chad for all that hell that he has gone through here lately. Wake up, wake up, wake up. You are being called to wake up. You are being called to look around and see what's going on and run from what you know is wrong. He is calling out his bride. He's calling out his church. Will you enter heaven with your head held low in shame because you know you made mistakes that you shouldn't have made? Or are you going to walk into heaven going, thank you, Lord, for giving me time to, to change? I tried as hard as I could on all these things. You know what he's going to tell you? All I wanted you to do was try. Turn to me. I will lead you the rest of the way. He says, you're not the one sanctifying you. I am. You're not the one saving you. I am. And you're not the one redeeming you. I am. All you have to do is try. I didn't call you to be perfect. I saved you from that. I called you to try. I called you to make an attempt, but that the desires of your heart would be on me and what the will of our Father was. So I will bring you the rest of the way. All those people that are trusting in themselves, and it sounds funny because 
they don't preach it, but yet when you pay close attention after your eyes are open, you can see it. They're trusting in themselves. They're trusting in their own holiness. That's why they're harassing other people, saying they're backloading works. Your holiness does you nothing. Your holiness serves you no purpose. It is Christ's holiness that we need. How are those things imputed onto us? It's not at the moment of salvation. At justification, we are justified to go through sanctification. As we go through the process of sanctification, He is cleansing us. The Holy Spirit is doing a work in us. We are being changed, led out of the life we were in before into a new life, to walk in newness of life. To walk, verse 1, right here on the screen, to, and to please God. Walking in faith. Then on the day of redemption, our salvation is completed. Our transformation is completed. Our sanctification is completed. We are then imputed with all the things we need. It's all fully manifested on that day of redemption. Read it. It's in the Bible. Lord, you have done such an amazing work in that you have opened the eyes, you've blown the lid off. As you got tired of what you were seeing, it's like, that's enough of this. You found the people that were willing to stand up and you put them out there. Hey, open this up. Tear that scab off that wound. I'm tired of this. We need to get this infection out of here. And that's exactly what this is, is an infection. Lord, thank you for your mercy and your grace. Thank you for giving us time to wake up. Thank you for giving us an opportunity to change and to do better and to follow and obey your will for us. Not our will, not what we think is right, what you tell us is right. But God, Lord, I pray you strengthen the brethren. Those are the eyes that you've opened. I pray you give them clarity of understanding. That they will decide to follow the truth. Not me. Not anyone else. No YouTuber or anybody else. The truth. You. Your word. I am nothing. They are nothing. We are all nothing. You are everything. That's what they need to follow. It was never intended for any of us to start a YouTube channel and be a leader Lead people in prayer, lead people in worship, lead people in fellowship. Not be a leader into, as to what the Word says. That's Catholicism. Yeah. Go look at some channels and say, hmm, sounds like Catholicism now. Yeah, that's why I ran from them and quit watching their videos. That's why I broke in fellowship with them. They don't even see it. Lord, it was meant for... Those of us you call to do this, it was meant for us to open the word up because the world at large wasn't. And to show these secrets that are right there, but to show them in our own individual way that you called us to show them. Each ministry is different and approaches us from a different aspect. But that that way more people will find it more relatable. Their eyes would be opened and they would run to you. But what did they do? They ran to the channel. Oop, that's my, that's my online pastor right there. No, that is not what the intention was. The intention was that you would go to Christ for the answers. That you would go to the Word for the answers. And Lord, you were trying to wake us up to that. And we all fell for it. I did too. But you brought us out of it. Thank you, Lord. You brought us out in the open. Thank you, Lord. You didn't save us for no reason. You saved us for a reason. You didn't save us to continue in sin. You saved us to walk in newness of life. You didn't save us so that we could go right back to the same life we had and just run around going, I'm saved by grace through faith. And nothing else, no change, no nothing, still at the bar, still partying at the club, still shaking your booty in the street, trying to show off to everybody, still walking in narcissism, still walking in pride. Still indulging in all the things that the Bible tells you to stay away from. You saved us so that we would be a people set apart. That we would stand out in the world. That people who didn't know us could look at us and go, that, I think that's a Christian. 
When they heard our speech, though we were meek and humble, that we would speak with authority and people would listen. That the evil spirits that are influencing people would flee at our presence because you dwelled within us. Not that we're anything, but that the power of God existed within us. And what staggered me was how many people were so quick to fall under someone's wing when they should have been falling under God's wing. Lord, purge your people. Purge this infection that has gone in the body. Purge this nonsense, this misunderstanding, this hate, this vitriol, this, this absolute twisting of your word. Purge it from us. So that we will see your word for what it says and walk in newness of life. And just like Ephesians 4.30 says, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Lord, purge us so that we won't grieve the Holy Spirit that dwells in each of us. That we will stand up in faith and in trust in you and you alone. That's salvation. Anybody can say grace through faith. But can you say, I trust in my Lord Jesus Christ because I see the things going on in the world and if I didn't trust him, I wouldn't have anything. I wouldn't be alive today if it wasn't for the Lord saving me. Where's your testimony? Where's your understanding of what true salvation is? It's not a statement. It's not a declaration. It's a belief. It's within you. It's within your heart. I've shared the scriptures that say this very same thing. Lord, please help them understand. Through intercession and through pleading, please help them understand. Please help them see what's going on. Please help them see with spiritual eyes and to turn from what's happening and to turn to the truth. Lord, I don't even want them to follow me. Turn them from me to you because this is all about you, not me or anyone else. I just I just want to share the truth and that's it. I want no glory. I want no nothing. I want you to be glorified because when you're glorified, we end up becoming glorified. But none of this works if we're not proclaiming the truth. Bless you, Lord. Thank you for this free gift of salvation you have provided for us. Your death on the cross, you, the, the suffering you went through, the shedding of... I mean, people don't sit and think about that. You were glorified in heaven. And you laid that down. Came down and were born in a woman. Going through everything the flesh goes through. You shouldn't have had to do that, but you did. The ultimate of humbling yourself, setting the example, you became a child to be raised in the world, to grow in the world, to experience all the stuff that goes on in this world and all the things that happen to men and women. Which made you a perfect advocate for us. All those brothers and sisters out there that have sin that they're struggling with, Go to your advocate. Pray to him. Stop going to YouTubers asking for help. Go to the Lord. In fact, right now through intercession, I lift up all unspoken requests, all desires to, to get out of something, all the, the struggles. Lord, give them victory over these things. Give them, oh, give them a will to fight and a desire to go to you in prayer and lift this up to you, which is what we were supposed to do. That they would trust in you and rely on you, not a YouTuber, not some guy from Africa calling himself an apostle, putting up YouTube videos where you can't understand half of what he says anyway, and most of his lies, not false prophets, giving you dreams and visions and whatever, any other kind of nonsense they can make up to try to lead you into a false understanding. Lord, give them these des the desire to go to you for these things, to go to you in prayer. I'm happy to lift people up in prayer, but they need to go to you in prayer at the same time. I see you working. 
in the body. I see you active in the world. I see you changing people. Many people we've asked for prayers for, for healing, you haven't healed them, yet you took the, what was wrong with them and you used it for your glory because they're changing. They're coming up and they're standing for the truth. This stuff isn't holding them back. They're, in their weakness, your strength is made evident. And I see it in so many people now happening. They're laying that suffering aside. They're, they're quitting focusing on that and they're focusing on you. And all of a sudden things are changing for them. The desires and the uh, things that they want to get out of their life, you're now helping them with because they quit focusing on that and started focusing on you. It's amazing. And you are allowing me to see it. Thank you, Lord. Lord, please help us. Help us to stand against this enemy. Help us to turn away from this nonsense. Help us to, to be a light in this world. A beacon of truth and hope for everyone. It is in your name, Lord, that I pray. It is in your name that I bless you and praise you and lift you on high. It is in your name that I add intercessory prayer for all the brethren. Amen. Thank you guys for joining me. For evening prayer please please do not let the evening pass I'm talking about this evening do not let this evening pass without going to the Lord in prayer just you and him by yourself go get somewhere alone go to him and ask him Lord show me if what he is saying is right show me in your word what's the truth Show me what these people are doing and if they're which ones are true and which ones aren't. Show me who I need to avoid. Give me strength, give me discernment that I may step out from these deceptions and stand in your truth with you. Do not let this evening go by without going into prayer and praying for your family, praying for your friends, praying for yourself. Do not let this evening go by without you, individually, by yourself, going to Christ and glorifying Him. Giving Him thanks for the food you ate tonight, the clothes you're wearing, the bed that you sleep in, the air conditioning you enjoy. Every little thing is a blessing from God if it's good. Make that a habit and watch your life change. Because now you've taken your focus off your life and you put it on Christ. When you put your focus on Christ, everything changes. We don't have to be perfect. We don't have to succeed at everything. We just need to put in some effort. We just need to try. Many of the great men in the Bible weren't successful. They were not successful at all. You guys hear me mention Noah and Jeremiah all the time. Elijah wasn't. Many of them weren't. Yet they answered the call, stood in faith, and they made an effort. And Christ brought them through to a triumphal entry into heaven. If you can realize that, if you can do that, you will have that triumphal entry also. I love you guys very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name. I pray you do not let this take you down. I pray you may use this to for strength. Use this to show you that Christ is working. You stand up for what's true. You stand up for what's right. You stand on what Christ has done, on the foundation, the cornerstone that was laid 2,000 years ago and that everything, all of this is built on. I bless you all in Jesus' name and I will see you in the next video.